Hey folks, Crystal Dow, Pioneer Field Agronomist here, and we are reporting from Urbana, Illinois. I'm here with Dr. Nick Sider, Field Crop Entomologist with the University of Illinois. Right now we're standing out at the Agriculture and Biological Engineering Station in Urbana. Today we're going to spend a little bit of time and talk about corn rootworm. So in northern Illinois, in central Illinois, we often hear about the western corn rootworm variant. Do you have much of an update on um, whether those are still out there or is that still a pressure we've got? Yeah, they're still out there. Um, it's in pockets here and there. It can be pretty difficult to, to track the variant. That's why the, the sticky trap sampling is so important. Um, you can't take an individual beetle and say, yes, this is a variant, or no, it's not, unless you actually find it laying eggs into a soybean field. What we've found is the overall numbers of rootworm have kind of decreased from their historical levels. Um, the damage that we see more and more is concentrated in corn on corn acres. It's not that the variant's gone away, it's that there are relatively um, low frequency in the population. We don't know the exact frequency that they're at, mm -hmm. um, but as those overall population numbers have gone down, uh, we found that most of the population is a traditional um, non-variant, I guess you would say non-rotation resistant beetle, and so more of our damage is occurring in corn on corn acres. Okay. So certainly something we need to be on the lookout for still, and, and especially if numbers start to increase, um, get back closer to those historical averages. Um, but we're seeing less of that damage than we have in the past, and it's simply because the, the overall numbers are down. Okay. And that variance presence varies from area, area to area as well, too. Like if it's heavily corn on corn pressure, or corn on corn rotation there, then you're not going to see as much of it, correct? It does, okay. yeah, and it's, you know, the historical kind of center of the the variant, the rotation resistant beetle zone, um, is just to the north of here, um, kind of in, in McLean County and uh, some of those counties in that area. That's been the heart of it in the past. It's these areas where like 97% of the landscape maybe is uh, rotated okay. corn and soybean. Gotcha. Um, the other thing to keep in mind in terms of rotation resistant is if you're in an area where there's a lot of northern corn rootworm, uh, those can be resistant to crop rotation as well, but their method is different. So with the variant western corn rootworm, they're laying their eggs in corn or soybean or in other crops, and then there's a pretty good chance if you're in one of those areas that those eggs laid into soybean will then hatch into corn. The way that northern corn rootworm gets by crop rotation is it lays its eggs into corn, like it's always done, mm -hmm. uh, but some percentage of those eggs will actually go through an extended diapause um, for two years instead of just one. Yeah. And so they'll be in diapause the following year when it's in soybean, and then will hatch into corn the following year and do damage. So if you're in an area where you're monitoring a lot of northern corn rootworm, it's important to remember that you actually need to follow that field for the next two years. Mm -hmm. If you had high numbers of northern corn rootworm in year one, mm -hmm. uh, you would actually be looking to protect um, corn grown in year three. Mm -hmm. Again, only in areas where you have high numbers of northern corn rootworm, and that's one of the reasons why identifying the species when you're doing the sticky trapping is so important. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.